My name is Tara Marquez. Um, I, listening to all the service providers, um, it's very interesting to me. I, I feel overwhelmed listening to them all again. I've had to deal with all of them, um, maybe not personally, but someone in their role at one point or another, and it, it can be mind-numbing. And I think one of the things that I want you guys to understand, um, whether you're a parent or not, is that you know all of these guys are specialists. This is their day job. Um, for those of us that are parents, we live 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I think the only exception on, on this panel with me is Kathy and I, who also has a son um, with autism that's actually in college. So um, I myself have um, two sons. I'm lucky enough to have two sons with autism. My husband and I um, have an eight-year-old son, Jonah, uh, who has autism, and also a, a six-year-old son, AJ, who has autism. And um, it's, it's interesting to um, actually be on this panel and listen to all of us again because um, Jonah was actually diagnosed at three uh, by the regional center. Um, actually, the school district first. We were in Wainimi School District initially, um, and the school district actually diagnosed him first and then um, told us about the regional center, and then he in turn had a, received a diagnosis from the regional center. Um, just when we thought things were going well and we had everything under control with him, um, we realized that our other son, AJ, had actually begun to lose words and stop talking and things of that nature. So by the age of two, um, at least we knew where to go, but we were on the road again to do that. So um, having two has been easier in some ways and harder in some ways. It's been very interesting. Um, both of them uh, receive services through the regional, they have a diagnosis through the regional center. Um, and both of them do right now behavioral in-home programs as well. Jonah, we took a little bit longer to um, really try that approach because he was always very verbal, um, was echolalic, but talked and, and things of that nature. So it wasn't as much of a concern as it was with our son, AJ. Um, with AJ, he's still not quite as verbal as we'd like him to be. He talks when he wants to get his point across. And so he's sort of learned to manipulate a little bit better than most. But um, I'm happy, you know, to say that both have gone through um, special education, both went through the preschool program here um, in Pleasant Valley School District because we live here currently in Camarillo, but um, both of them, um, I'm really proud to say, are fully included at our home school right now with AIDS, and that's a tremendous jump. I mean, we still have a huge road and battle ahead of us, um, but we've had tremendous support, and it's, it's been a, a huge learning process um, in learning to work with the schools and learning to work with um, all of the service providers that we come in contact with um, in one capacity or another. It, it can be frustrating at times, it can be um, rewarding at times, um, but I, I absolutely encourage all of you that are parents and even if you're not to go out and find support groups because you know what, you've got tremendous resources here. There's tremendous amounts of parents who have been here and done that that have older kids, that have younger kids, that have I'm going to get emotional today, too, because I want to admit to you guys, you know, um, my husband and I actually both work full-time. You know, if you count up, um, in fact, I was I was mentioning to um, the speech therapist next to me um, before we started, you know, it's, um, so, some days are better than others. We have, you count, you count up the team of therapists that work with our kids, both the boys in their home programs, um, the people that are going, you know, the, the teachers, the aides at school. Um, we actually keep an au pair in our house so that we can stay sane and still go to work in the mornings and come home in the afternoon. We have 18 people in our children's lives um, beyond my husband and myself and my au pair, you know, in and out of our house, helping to coordinate therapies, helping to make sure things go well at school and things of that nature. So it's a tremendous amount of effort um, to keep all of these things um, going. And we've learned to uh, I, I didn't have my BlackBerry for a week, so I was very much struggling with not keeping up with, with emails and things like that because that's become my husband and my and our uh, method for him and I to you know keep in contact with the therapists and and know about day to day changes and even keep in communication with each other because that's been the biggest piece of it for for us and, and um, really trying to just have a normal life. I think that's the biggest piece of this is. You want you need to you need to worry about your kids and the schools and therapies that they receive and helping them to overcome some of their deficits, but you still have to have a life. Um, and uh, <laughs> it's uh, it's it's hard. There's there's days that 
this morning was a rough morning for me. Um, my husband's come home to me because my husband actually sits on the Church uh, uh, Autism Society board, and uh, I actually sit on the board for Paws for Kids. And my husband's come home from meetings um, sometimes where I was even at home with the kids, <laughs> crying because I wasn't quite sure how to handle everybody, you know. And um, there, we all have those days, you know. It's we all have those days. I don't care who you meet or how well you think they're doing one day to the next. We all have hard days. It's a tremendous burden. It's a tremendous amount of stress in them. Um, it's a tremendous amount of work, but it's so rewarding um, at the same time because I get to see my kids and they're happy and they're healthy and it, our situation could be so much worse. You know, and um, I still have my kids. Um, they may not be what we expected when we got them, but we still have our kids. So. I want you all to remember that as parents. I want you all to remember that if you work with kids too, because it's a big, it's huge. Um, my husband and I continue to do support groups, and there's been nights that we may come home and spend an hour with our kids and get, have our respite worker take them and still go. I mean, think we, we've had nights that we say, do we really want to go? Do we really want to do this? And at the same time, we, we go and we talk to some of these parents because we specifically do a parent support group, and we realize, you know what? <coughs> Wow, <laughs> we're so lucky, you know, because we've heard stories from other parents that are really horror stories and, and things of that nature. And, you know, it's, it's so important for us as parents to work together um, and to help each other out. And it's, it's, it's a difficult thing because many parents tend to avoid it because, because it is. And I've, we've been there. It's a very difficult thing to deal with. Um, there's a lot of denial involved with it. I think my husband and I both went through periods of um, alternating acceptance and denial of, you know, what we were going through it was very difficult, but in the end, you know, we still needed to remain a family and we still needed to remain, you know, to, you know, stick together to, again, make that, that life as normal as possible. So, um, I can't possibly tell the whole story to you guys on two children um, and the amount of time that we have, but um, I did write a blog post last week because I was trying to think of everything I wanted to write. Um, I've left a copy back there on the uh, Pause for Kids area right there, but I also, just one copy, but I also put some uh, little business cards back there with my email address and stuff. So if any of you would like to contact me or ask questions here in a minute, I'm happy to do that as well. So.